Good afternoon, everyone. This is Andrea from SQM Group, and I'd like to, rec to welcome you to our most latest webinar, Recognition Changes Behaviors. And uh, we're the, just some housekeeping items before we start. Uh, the webinar is going to be about a half an hour today. Uh, there is a handout that's available to you in GoToMeeting if, um, if you're not familiar with GoToMeeting, but a handout is available to you to download so that you can share internally. And also, we will be sending out a link afterwards so of the webinar recording so that you can forward out internally again to any of your peers or your teams. Um, also, if you have any questions, GoToMeeting does allow for a question and answer area. So what you can do is, is ask your questions and then we can answer it uh, as we go through the webinar or at the end. Uh, what we are hoping for is some question and answer periods at the end. And if we don't manage to get to your questions uh, by the end of the webinar, we will reach out to you to answer any questions uh, personally. And uh, so, you know, today, you know, one of the things that we get asked um, quite often is, is how do you uh, use your voice to customer metrics to, to recognize and drive performance changes within the contact center and, and why is it important? And, you know, interestingly, what we find is that uh, with 40% of repeat calls being driven by agent behavior, that sometimes the focus on recognition in a job well done can be one of the biggest drivers to help improve uh, contact resolution and, and first contact resolution and, and can be the easiest way to drive to overall improvements. We've seen organizations be able to improve the FCR by as much as 5% within 30 days by just implementing a recognition program as well as performance management program in that time frame and recognizing job well done as well as uh, coaching and performance managing the low performers in within the contact center. So a little bit of background about me as uh, before I move forward and of course about SQM Group for those of you that are not aware of, of what we do. So myself, uh, my name is Andrea Pau. I'm the Senior Vice President of Client Advocacy here at SQM Group. I work very closely with our clients on a strategic perspective to help them improve their overall customer experience through FCR and contact resolution. I work extensively with, with health insurance and financial insur uh, insurance as well as the utility sector. And so I bring a lot of, of knowledge and understanding as to the nuances and the complications within those industries. So uh, what, what SQM Group does for our clients is that um, we help organizations improve customer employee experience performance one individual at a time. And we do that through three pillars. One, through our customer experience research. So we compile and, and understand data and we benchmark, track, and improve customer experience. And of course, it's powered by our MySQM Customer Experience Insight software. We do consulting, so we will come on site to your organization and review your practices in regards to the documented best practices that we see that our world-class performing organizations do on a day-to-day -day basis. And we provide targeted and individualized recommendations on improving customer experience based on what your organization is doing. And finally, uh, a lot about what this webinar is about, we recognize uh, top performers. So our customer and employee experience and best practice awards are some of the most prestigious and sought after industry awards in North America. And we recognize our, our top performers on an annual basis in May at our annual customer experience conference. So some of the things that we're going to cover today in our 30 minutes is that uh, basically we're going to be talking about the best practices when it comes to a recognition program. Um, as you can imagine, that recognition needs to be provided on a frequent, descriptive, and of course impactful manner. So that really agents need to know what they're being recognized for, uh, behaviors that are expected in order to be able to 
achieve high levels of performance, which then will motivate them to achieve the results. So we're going to talk about best practices for recognizing those results, what CSRs find important for ranking, uh, for recognition, how to coach to supervisors, uh, sorry, how supervisors can coach to agents to ensure that, um, that the recognition takes place, some examples of recognition programs that are available, and some things that you can take a look at internally on in your own recognition program to see if there's some areas for improvements for yourself. So why is recognition important? Well, uh, interestingly, um, your agents, and, and I don't know if you've done any correlation or review about this internally, your agents have, of course, have a lot of impact on FCR. So for your, your top performing agents, so this is based on CSR CSAT, the top 15% of CSRs have an average FCR performance of 77%. Whereas your bottom, bottom performing agents, so again, it's on a CSR CSAT, so they have a CSR CSAT of 62%, have an average performance of FCR of 62%. So there's a 15% gap between the top agents and the bottom agents for FCR performance. So one, there's some aspects in terms of recognizing the agents that do a great job and those agents in which that you need to motivate and push forward to be able to help improve their performance, which then ultimately, of course, impacts FCR. From an operational perspective, what does this mean from your agent's performance? So again, speaking to the top 15% and the bottom 15% of agents, and this is based on, on average uh, contact center performance. So um, what we do is the average cost per call for an average contact center is $9.28. And the average cost per contact resolution is $13.08. So in essence, co the average cost per contact resolution is the cost, what it costs an organization to resolve an inquiry. And the average cost per call is the average cost per call as it comes in. So regardless if it's a first call or the fourth call coming in, it's $9.28. But if you're taking a look at the entire inquiry basis, it's $13.08 to resolve a contact. So what does this mean in terms of your agent's performance? Well, from a, your top 15% of your agents cost the organization cost per contact resolution of $12.06, whereas your bottom 15% of your agents is $14.85. Quite often, what we would say is that for your bottom 15% of your agents, it's actually going to save you money if the average cost per call resolution is $13.08. It actually saves you money to keep those bottom 15% of agents at home and not taking calls because of their performance when it comes to contact resolution. So there's a lot of at stake in order to be able to help improve your agent's performance. And, and move them forward to help improve the overall customer experience. So what do agents look for when it comes to performance recognition? Um, you know, this is, I'm sure all of you, if you've taken some, some basic psychology courses, you probably recognize uh, this Maslow's hierarchy of needs and where recognition fits. So, you know, your compensation and benefits will kind of take an aspect in terms of of the safety, um, where where you fit in in terms of recognition program is that esteem, peace, and love and belonging. The number one reason why individuals uh, leave an organization is because of lack of recognition at work. So you know it's that recognition piece is huge when it comes to happy employees putting their best foot forward, uh, making sure that. They're doing a job well done. So having a, a, a recognition program uh, set up uh, based on voice to customer metrics is huge because if you award for a job well done on metrics that you're measuring, what's important to be measured means that's what's important to the agents to be able to work on and improve on on a daily basis. 
So when we, if recognition is so important, we, we look at organizations and ask them, how often do you provide recognition? Interestingly, 41% of the time, recognition is only given monthly, whereas 18% is daily, 13% is weekly, and 10% is annually. So if agents are only being recognized almost by half the time in terms of monthly, how do they know if they're doing well on a day-to-day -day basis, in a week-by-week -week basis? In essence, they are, you know, they'll spend an hour at a time, once a month, taking a look at their overall performance. But ultimately, at the end of the day, that's the only time that, on a, for an average contact center, that they're being looked at in terms of, of performance. Our world-class performing organizations do this daily. They will spend time daily with their agents, and they will recognize their agents on uh, either by email or by notes by public recognition. They will coach on a daily basis, weekly basis, and they will put dedicated resources where their supervisors spend a minimum of 50% of their time on a weekly basis coaching to agent performance. And they never give up coaching. So even when call volume is extremely high and it's all hands on deck, coaching always takes place and recognition always takes place on a daily basis because of the importance it is to drive to agent behavior and performance. So what drives agent behavior and what is it that they need in order to be able to be motivated to perform well? And um, you know, this is based on data uh, where we, we conduct over 25,000 employee satisfaction surveys on an annual basis and we ask employees what is it that motivates them on a day-to-day -day basis. The number one motivator for agents is advancement, two is additional training, and three is special assignment. Interestingly, um, you know, gift cards, party and fun activities, special notes are all prizes and merchandise are all things that we see contact centers do on a regular basis. But the number one thing to drive to agent performance is, of course, career advancement. So. It's definitely something to take a look at when you're creating your recognition programs. Make sure that your recognition programs are done up by motivators that work for your agents. So if you're putting, you know, a lot of emphasis on party and fun activities and prizes and merchandise, you might find that that's not going to appeal to your agents and not actually change behavior. So we would suggest in your employee satisfaction surveys, that you ask them agents what motivates them to be recognized uh, by their behavior so that you can make sure that your recognition programs are set up to, to enhance and change your, your CSR behavior. So best practices when it comes to CSR recognition, you need to be frequent. So you need to recognize agents daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. It has to be timely, consistent, frequent, in order to be able to change behaviors. You also need to be descriptive. So you need to recognize agents for the behaviors that they use to resolve a call or provide the great customer experience. It can't be generic because if they can't associate the behavior to why they're being recognized, then you're not gonna change behaviors. Uh, we always recommend voice to customer metrics as a measurement. So for example, CSR, CSET, and contact resolution at the agent and supervisor level, because those are the metrics that agents and supervisors can own and have the biggest opportunity to be able to change. Uh, you want to focus CSR recognition of behaviors to have a positive impact on FCR, CSET, and contact resolution performance. And of course, those are the behaviors you want the agent to repeat. And as I mentioned in the, by the previous slide, know your agents. So one agent may be, uh, rec may be motivated by a public recognition ceremony, whereas another agent might actually be mortified to be brought up front into the contact center and recognized for world-class performance. So whatever that it might be for your agents individually as well as your overall contact center, know what recognition program works. Ask your agents in order for it to be effectively. And ultimately, at the end of the day, a best practice for a recognition investment is to spend 1% of a CSR's annual pay 
or about $400 per CSR per year. So, you know, what that would end up being is, is that's the funds that you would allocate towards your, your different recognition programs, your prizes, uh, if you're doing gift cards, uh, if you're doing bonusing program and so on, that's what you would want to invest in terms of your uh, annual recognition program and investment on a per agent basis. That being said, you're not spending $400 equally per agent because those agents that are your top performers, you're going to be expecting to spend more money on them, but ultimately in the end, your overall budget allocation would be $400 per agent per year. So how do you recognize performance? Well, what you want to do is do this daily where you listen to post-call surveys and provide descriptive feedback to agents that use on the calls. They need to spend at least 15, 30 minutes every day recognizing agents' behaviors that, where it helped them resolve complex or emotional calls. So remember, you need your supervisors to be dedicating a minimum of 50% of their weekly time to coaching and recognition for an effective recognition program to take place. Uh, CSRs always re receive positive feedback from supervisors and senior management as specific behaviors. And some ideas in terms of recognizing on a daily basis, you could provide a, a, a monetary incentive where they receive $5 for every world-class performing call based on VOC results. They can get items such as gift certificates, lottery tickets, movie tickets. Uh, we've seen tokens or points that can be redeemed towards organized merchandise. They could receive an, and send electronic call kudos about positive actions or behavior. So that could be sending an email note or a public recognition so that their peers can see how well they're doing. Um, but also, most importantly, too, the agents have a an ongoing desktop view access to see their results and how they compare to their peers and to the entire contact center. Because if agents know how they are performing on an individual basis, they can be positively motivated if they're on the bottom of their team to be able to improve their own performance to raise their performance levels on up. From a monthly VOC recognition, some best practices is that a town hall meeting is led by senior management. Um, and that, of course, as always, recognition is based on voice to customer metrics. And both agents and supervisors are recognized. A best practice that we've seen that works really well is a, is a traveling, what we call a traveling SQM trophy or a traveling voice to customer trophy that for each agent and team that has top voice to customer metrics performance, they are awarded by this trophy and then the trophy is handed off individually basis or a team by team basis throughout the contact center as they're recognized in their in monthly town hall meetings. Uh, you also want to share great customer service success stories and the behaviors that CSRs and supervisors used to achieve your world-class call resolution experiences. So we have seen organizations play call recordings of difficult calls, which ended up into a world-class call experience, have brought those agents to the front, recognized them publicly, and spoke of the behaviors that they wanted to emulate within that organization. Also, during your town hall meetings, you can give out gift certificates, have a raffle for our agents who are on track to be world class certified. We have seen organizations put raffles in place so that agents can uh, attend our customer experience conference and attend our CSR Appreciation Day, which they would, uh, you know, go to a spa or do wine tours or or host houseboating activities. But in essence, they're being recognized for world class performance. And that raffle is in place in order to be able to, to qualify for uh, this trip um, to attend this conference. So finally, you know, this all compiles up into an annual VOC recognition program. And this annual program is kind of a, a large celebration that is actually um, in a prominent location with the CEO or the president in attendance and hosting the event. They recognize your world-class performing uh, agents 
uh, and even your top performing agents of the year includes your CSR. Uh, everyone receives a certificate. Your agents can bring guests. But, you know, ultimately in the end, what's the most important is you have this large gala event that you bring your top performers to to be able to be recognized for their world-class performance and make it a, a, a very large, huge experience so that it can be memorable, that they can be recognized by their, their peers in front of the entire organization. So I talked a little bit about best practices. Um, some great recognition programs we've seen is that so I call kudos recognition program that allows for peer-to-peer -peer, uh, supervisor to agent type feedback uh, in a public environment, online environment that allows for ongoing recognition. Um, there's what we also talk about is a uh, sort of a, like maybe a Christmas event or an annual event where uh, agents are given gifts. We call it a Santa in a box, but it's recognizing agents for their performance. There's a service hero recognition program where for agents are being recognized for providing exemplary customer service. And finally, there's a voice the customer certification recognition program that you can utilize through SQM groups through your voice the customer surveys. So the certification, there's definitely some variety of metrics in order to be able to qualify for it. At minimum, you need 25 surveys on an annual basis with a with contact resolution and CSR CSAT being at world class levels. Uh, not only are our agents eligible for it, but also supervisors are eligible for it. And we have a recognition program where if agents and supervisors provide stories or they nominate other individuals, they could qualify for CSR Supervisor of the Year where they get a trophy and a thousand dollar cash prize. So where do you spend your time? Well, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that your supervisors need to spend a minimum of their 50, minimum of 50% of their time coaching to agent behavior. And so where their time is spent is that they need to assess calls. And they, the, how they assess calls is based on voice to customer survey feedback. They get a survey where it's uh, non-FCR or non are not resolved and what's taken place in order to, to bring it to their attention. So it might be poor customer satisfaction, lack of resolution. You listen to the call recordings and see what happened. Uh, an action plan is developed with, uh, with goals in mind to be able to achieve certain levels of contact resolution and CSR CSAT for agent performance. There's ongoing communication with the agent as to what their performance is and the plans in place in order to help improve their performance. And finally, you need to also receive feedback from the agents because they may feel that the assessment may be off or they also can provide opportunities of their strengths and weaknesses of where they need to focus on to be able to improve their own performance. So what, when it comes to, to time on a per agent basis, um, you know, you want to be able to send out daily exceptional call evaluations, daily critical error call evaluations. You want to spend trending on a weekly basis and monthly coaching on a monthly basis. So you can definitely see where your supervisors need to spend time on a per agent basis in order to be able to move your CSR performance. So I guess a good question is, is to is ask yourself is, are you spending enough time, enough coaching time with your agents? So, you know, if, if you were to take a look at in a breakout in terms of, of number of hours and say a breakout of your agents, you definitely need to track your time and be able to make sure that you're spending the majority of time with the agents that can make the biggest opportunities for improvement. So typically what you'll find is that 70% of your time is spent on your middle group with uh, 10 to 15% on your high performing group and 10 to 15% on your, your needs improvement and unacceptable group. And the, the high performing group, you don't need to spend that much time because they're already doing very well, but they still need to have ongoing recognition. Your bottom performing agents, your bottom 15% performing agents, you don't need to spend as much time with because 
uh, typically what it is is that their performance is based on will and not necessarily skill. So it's difficult to coach them out of that aspect. So there may be some aspects of performance management and managing them out of the contact center or identifying whether or not it is a skill issue versus a will issue and helping them move up. But ultimately, at the end of the day, that you need to be spending your time with that middle 70% of the group and spending the majority of your time there because that's the group that you're going to get your biggest movements, your biggest bang for the buck for improving performance and ultimately improving your contact resolution. And what's very important is you need to track your time with this because if you don't know who you're, who you're spending your time with, you don't know if you are being efficient in your time and spending your time in the right areas. Quite often, I'll work with contact centers who will spend 80% of their coaching time on the bottom 15% of their agents, and those agents are not the ones that necessarily will make the big shifts and improvements. So an organization that has done extremely well by this is um, Fortis BC. So there are, 20, there are 2018 Customer Experience Best Practice Award winner for CSR recognition. Um, you will have, uh, of course, this deck here, but there's a link to their best practice. And they introduced a customer service-wide peer-to-peer recognition platform called Kudos. And they've seen a, a steady increase in customer satisfaction FCR results for employees with two plus years of tenure, which is absolutely phenomenal because typically what we find is that the more seasoned tenured agents typically can have lower FCR and, or sorry, contact resolution and CSAT results. And the reason being is they've kind of been there, done that. Um, they're less uh, open to change. They may still be using old, um, old processes. Uh, answering questions sort of on status quo, and so they can have lower performing numbers than new hires. So to see a steady increase in customer satisfaction FCR with agents with two plus years of tenure is actually a, a, a phenomenal thing. So if you want to see a best practice, definitely take a look at that story online. And then finally, you know, if you want to take a look at your own recognition program and what does it take to be able to offer a world-class performing program, here are some questions that you can take a look at to be able to see if your recognition program practices in place are effective. And again, you can take a look at this on your deck and, uh, you know, your account manager or Natter or myself are more than happy to, to be able to take a look at this and answer any questions you might have. Also, we do go on site with our clients because sometimes it can be really difficult to assess your best practices. We go on site and conduct fo focus groups and analysis and provide in-depth feedback and recommendations to help improve your best practices so that you can meet your world-class numbers. So, uh, you know, that's all the, um, the items that I have for today that I want to cover. You know, again, some of the things that I want to really stress is that for a recognition program to take place, you want to, and for it to be effective, you want to make sure that you allocate the funds to it. So, um, you know, a minimum 1% of your agent salary, so it's on for the average contact center, that's $400 per agent per year. You want your supervisors to spend a minimum of 50% of their time on recognition, on coaching and performance management to be able to help change agent behavior but also ask your agents what's important to them. So if you remember in terms of the, the list of what motivates, motivates agents, the most important one was career advancements, yet what I find typically is contact centers place the most emphasis on prizes, fun events, gift cards, maybe monetary prizes, which ultimately in the end might be some of the lower motivators for, for agents. So, you know, at this point in time, the, the floor is open for our questions. So if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to, to throw them out there. Um, and I don't see anything there as of yet, so I'll just wait for a few more seconds. There's on our website, too, um, we, which is www.skmgroup.com. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of other great stories from previous award winners or contact experience best practice winners. So you can take a look at them well 
and, and see how they go. So I don't see any questions as of yet, and we are on the half hour. So to, to recognize everyone's day and the time that they have on their workday, um, I would like to thank everyone for attending the webinar today. As always, we very much appreciate the time and the attention spent at these. Uh, again, you will be getting a link to this webinar as well as a copy of the deck. But if you have any questions at all, uh, you can reach me out to me at andrea at sqmgroup.com or you can reach us at the below phone numbers or the phone numbers that you see on the screen. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thanks for your day, and I hope that you have a great rest of your week. Thank you.